I'm Ryan Milliken from Hardway Performance, and you're listening to the Diesel Power Podcast. This is Jaron Holder from Holder Down Performance. This is Anthony Rings from XDP. I'm Demetri Miller with No Zone Diesel. I'm Drew with DNJ Precision Machine. I'm Pinky. And you're listening to the Diesel Power Podcast. Diesel Power Podcast. Diesel Power Podcast. And you're listening to the Diesel Power Podcast. The one and only Diesel Power Podcast. Hello, Diesel fans, and welcome to the official Diesel Power Podcast. This episode is all about power strokes. We've been listening to you guys out there. He wanted to hear more power stroke guys out there that are pushing the envelope and building parts and and pushing that platform forward. So today we've got David Ferguson from Red Diamond Diesel. And this guy, he's hit the scene hard. I mean, he's building some amazing transmissions, doing some really cool things with the 5R110s. And, uh, I mean, his 6 liter, it was in DPC. And we're going to sit down, we're going to talk to him. Get to know more about his business, where he came from, and where he's taking the 5R110s, the 6 liters, and where he wants to end up at. We know you guys are going to like this episode. Let's get right to it. Well, really excited to have you, David, here on the Diesel Power Podcast today. And uh, can't wait to talk transmissions with you. We're glad you're here. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, heard, I've heard about your shop for a long time. I know you, you do awesome work. And, um, but I'm always curious and a lot of, you know, the, the truck guys out there ask too, is how did you get into building transmissions? Did you always like them? Was it, you know, something you just kind of found that it is like a passion? Uh, you know, it, it, it's, uh, I started out in, uh, you know, a Ford dealer, I guess a lot of, you know, the, the Ford guys and power stroke guys and all the, all the big guys all usually start out in dealers. Um, and to be honest with you, I was always scared to death of them. Uh, you know, hell, I, I was, you know, always worried that when I pulled a motor, I was going to slide a uh, converter out and mess a seal up or, you know, whatnot. And, uh, you know, if that happened, you know, I was always going up front to the transmission guy and telling him to pull the converter and put a seal in for me and put the converter back in. Um, but, uh, I guess the, I guess the big turning point was there after, um, after the dealer, I, uh, I started working with another company, uh, Holder Down, um, there for, uh, for a couple of years and, uh, um, started getting into the performance stuff and really started pushing, uh, pushing the old six liter. Um, and, you know, I started having issues with my stock trans and pulled it all apart. And, uh, you know, you got kits out there, you know, the Suncoast kit, the PATC kit and, uh, you know, the odds and ends kits, you know, stuff that you can piece together and, um, you know, I'm not bashing any of those kits by any means, but, uh, you know, I, I put probably four or five different style kits in my trans, just, you know, off the shelf kits. And, uh, they just, they, they just didn't last for me. Um, you know, I would, there was one point in time where I would go up to the, to the line to, to spool the truck up and it, it, you know, the turbo would charge out and I would just lose everything. Uh, you know, it, it just, I just kept having problem after problem after problem and just could not figure it out. And then, Finally, uh, you know, I started asking around and getting ideas and, uh, um, you know, got with uh, Andy Warren there. And, uh, you know, he and I have been, uh, you know, I, it feels like he's my brother. Uh, you know, the whole Warren family actually is, uh, you know, really, really close to me. Um, I owe a lot to them. And, uh, you know, we all kind of, you know, I, I picked up some stuff from him. And, uh, you know, here, here I am, you know, building these five R's for uh, – uh, for these guys that, you know, go out, drag race, sled pull, uh, dyno, you know, daily drive, street race, you know, whatever, whatever it is they do, they do. And, uh, you know, obviously I'm not perfect. You know, I've, I've had a couple issues, uh, with the units, you know, if, if any, if any man touches a unit, you know, it, uh, there's a possibility of failure, you know? Okay. Oh, definitely. It's one of those things too, where I don't know if it's intentional, but you know, I, I haven't been in the default game you know since the beginning you know i came i'd say somewhat later just because of my age and there's almost this perception like everything's always perfect there's never any issues or anything like that but what i found is that like the the builders like yourself is they take care of the customer that's the most important thing is you're probably not going to have a problem but if you do i'm here to help you get you through it make sure you know, your the truck's back up and running, and you know you go back to work or whatever it is you're using the truck for. Right, absolutely, I agree. You know, you can you can build the world's best product, and uh, you no matter what, you're still going to have an issue. Uh, you know, there's uh, uh, I think it was 
Yeah, it was about two weeks ago. Um, you know, I shipped a uh, transmission out to a customer who was uh, um, he's he had gone through three other builders, uh, three other transmissions, and kept having issue after issue. And um, you know, he contacted me, and uh, you know, I I worked with him, and uh, um, I had some issues with some converters there that uh, were lost in UPS, but uh, finally finally was able to track them down. Um, so. Uh, Ship the converter or ship the entire transmission out to uh, Missouri, uh, and uh, customer got it, put it in, and it was making a ticking noise. Um, you know, we I told him I was like, man, I don't know. You know, check this, check that. You know, it could be a flex plate. Um, you know, he finally told me. He said, you know, it wasn't doing this before. And I said, all right. Well, I mean, he he had to leave for uh, for Texas uh, that Sunday, and it was this was Friday night. Um, literally, I think it was maybe 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night when, uh, when he had, uh, texted me and called me. Um, finally, you know, I, I looked at my wife and I said, uh, I'm going to have to go to Missouri. And she's like, seriously, I said, I, I've got to, you know, this, this guy is, you know, he's, he is loading a gooseneck up Sunday and he's heading to Texas from Missouri. I said, I have two options. I can either send him on his way, and then what's going to happen when he's in between there and Texas? And he's going to be broke down, then we're both screwed. Yeah. Um, or do I just, you know, pack some stuff up and head over to Missouri? Yeah, and sure enough, that's what I did. And um, it was actually a snap ring issue, um, overdrive snap ring. Uh, it, uh, I, I've got two pressure plates in overdrive there. It, um Basically, the pressure plate was spinning around in the case, and it was making a ticking noise. Um, it was just, it was my mistake. Uh, so we, uh, um, when I pulled it all apart, I put it back together, everything was perfect, and, uh, you know, it, um, he loaded everything up and drove the truck to Texas the next day. Um, then uh, I had a, um, a good friend of mine uh, who is uh, over in North Carolina. Um, once I got back from Missouri, you know, I went through, uh, um, I think it was all day Sunday, you know, I finally got back. Um, then, uh, that Monday, uh, a customer called me, well, my, the fr- friend of mine called me, it was a, he's a dealer and, uh, he said, Hey man, we, we've got a, uh, you know, we've got a delay in a reverse, you know, it's, uh, it won't go into reverse until you hit the throttle a little bit. So I thought, you know, that's a son of a bitch, you know, like <laughs> what the hell is going on here? And so, uh, Packed everything up and drove to North Carolina, you know, another eight and a half, nine hours or whatever it was. Um, and sure enough, you know, I tore everything apart, and uh, there's a little um, orifice in the back of that case that uh, is pressed in. Um, and uh, just my luck, it, uh, I guess the pressure had spit it out, and there's an orifice sitting in the back of the, uh, back of the uh, transmission there. Um, but uh, pushed a new one in and tapped it in and uh, spiked it and, absolutely love the truck now so it's yeah it definitely comes down to uh taking care of your customers uh you know i'm not perfect uh, i never claim to be uh, I, I try to take care of everybody i possibly can it, it, at every expense that i can um that's all you can do absolutely what's uh what's the most common types of failure say on the stock transmissions that either see on cores or guys call you up and ask you questions before they, you know, order one or, or have you build a transmission for them? Um, uh, honestly, I would say probably nine times out of ten, you know, the, the cores that I get from customers or uh, um, just stock builds or whatever, the, the, the biggest failure is direct clutch, um, which uh, basically is uh, your fifth gear. Everybody talks about uh, the three to five shift flare, um, or uh, when you put it in reverse, uh, the, the the transmission will shudder real bad. Um, direct clutch from factory is the, I don't know what they were thinking. You know, they're they're using a uh, eighty thousandths uh, pressure plate for uh, that's on the piston side, and you know a nice thick pressure plate on the snap ring side. Um, just over time, that uh, that pressure plate gets hot and uh, it warps, it, it bows out, domes out, whichever way you want to call it, and when uh, we don't have a flat surface and you're you know, pressing against a, uh, a pointed surface, essentially, it, it's just going to burn it up. Um, and that's where, you know, that's where your, my builds, you know, they, they come with a thicker pressure plate down below um, to where that flexing, that bowing, that doming it, it isn't going to happen. You know, it, it shouldn't happen, we'll put it that way. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's, that's normally the biggest failure that I see. Um, in the in the five R's uh, in all years, you know, oh three, oh four, oh five, oh seven, 
and even you know oh uh, nine to ten. Uh, that's 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 the main failure, and it is is direct clutch failure. Now, like, now, so on these builds, say, do they? Well, depending on the power level, I'm sure there's different hard parts, you know, that are needed. But if someone calls you and they don't really know what they need, but they tell you about how much power they're making or, or how they want to use the truck, what different kind of setups do you have to handle the different torque and and, and you know just power level that they're at? Sure. Well, uh, basically, I start off. I got I got three base levels, and uh, you know, stage one, two, and three. Um, and I, I, I have those as a platform, essentially. Um, you know, it, I, I can, you know, make a stage one and a half, stage two and a half. You know, I'm, I'm working on a, uh, a stage four full comp uh, right now, kind of tinkering with and uh, messing with a valve body. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's uh, like the stage one, you know, what I call the Super Stock Plus. Uh, you know, it still comes with, uh, you know, my pressure plates, the thicker pressure plates. Um, all the same uh, uh, clutch packs other than direct. You know, it's, uh, direct only comes with uh, five clutches, whereas uh, stock comes with uh, four. Um, there's no billet in it. Uh, it's good for, you know, 600 to 650. Um, I use the, uh, the diesel power uh, uh, or the, the DPC uh, converter from Phil. Uh, that's the only converters that I use. Um, and uh, like I said, it's good for 600 or 650, something along that line. Um, then I uh, bump up to the uh, the stage two, which then uh, is good for 850. Um, it comes with a billet input, billet low reverse hub, uh, and uh, it comes with my upgraded direct drum, which uh, I do a little machining on the drum to uh, to house an extra clutch. You know, so that way it's uh, it comes with uh, six clutches as opposed to just five. Um, but uh, and it uh, it comes with a little bit bigger converter as well. Um, and then uh, my stage three, which uh, you know I have a little bit thicker pressure plate all the way around. Um, and then uh, the uh, my, my extreme drum for direct is what I call it. It actually houses uh, seven clutches, and uh, it's actually got a a, um, a heat shield in there as well to uh, basically kind of keep the keep the heat away from the pressure plate. Um, what I normally tell people, you know, if, if you're wanting a stage three, um, you're not going to be towing with it. Uh, you know, it's a, that, that three to five shift is, you know, it's pretty firm. Um, but uh, at wide open throttle, it, you know, it shifts as smooth as can be. Um, yeah, the stage three is definitely, uh, definitely one for the track, you know, sled, uh, dyno, stuff like that. It just, but hooking a trailer up to it, it's, it, it can be done, but, you're probably going to be breaking some stuff. Right. Yeah. It's usually, you know, like you get into those just crazy power levels. Yep. You're probably not towing. You might daily drive it, you know, but it's really you're taking it to the track and, and having fun sure. with it. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, like, uh, and like I said, how you know I kind of have a one and a half and two and a half. Like obviously my stage three comes with uh, full billet. Um, but, uh, you know, sometimes people, uh, for instance, the, the best way I can describe it is the, the, the sled guys. Um, you know, sometimes they're not pushing, you know, a 1,000 horsepower. Or, you know, they're, they're right at the 800 horsepower range. Um, but uh, when you're hooked to a sled, there's different strains on the transmission in different locations. Um, you know, like some people pull in uh, uh, th- or third low. Uh, you know, some people pull in uh, drive uh, low or, you know, first high. It just... All those put different strains on different locations. So, uh, you know, in that particular case, you know, I would build a, you know, a, a two and a half for somebody, which, you know, then comes with a, uh, the, instead of just a input shaft and a low reverse hub, it also comes with a intermediate shaft, um, which uh, is where quite a bit of strain goes through too. Uh, it's where basically you connect both the uh, front and the rear halves of the transmission. Um, so, it, yeah, you really got to find out what the customer is doing with the truck uh and then kind of build around him um but i I just found that it's easier to have a baseline of three stages to explain to a customer that you know i get i get probably 40 or 50 messages a day that says uh, you know hey how much to build a trans well it's it's a little bit more in depth of a question than just that um and uh, you know that's when you know basically i give them my three stages 
and then ask, you know, what's done to the truck? What are you going to do with the truck? Um, just kind of get a better better idea of what the truck is doing. And this transmission platform, has it reached, a, like, has it peaked? Is there a power level that it just can't hold and you've got to go well, something else? Well, I mean, in all honesty, I, I have not given up on the 5R. I know my boy Charlie Keeter over there, you know, I know you're listening there, buddy. Uh, I know uh, he gave up on it, um, which is fine. You know, it, hey, it's, it's everybody's cup of tea and everybody has a different taste. Um, you know, he, he switched over to the 4R because uh, I know he kept having some issues with it. Um, but uh, as far as peaking out, the, the biggest issue with these 5Rs and these higher horsepower trucks uh, it are all the inputs. Um, that uh, that the TCM and the PCM have to configure before each shift. Um, like uh, the other day, I uh, I actually sponsor um, Outlaw Diesel uh, Performance over here in uh, Greenfield, Indiana. They they're running one of my Stage Three units. Um, they kept having issues with uh, when they would leave the line, the truck would just neutral out. Well, I you know I would take it apart, and every clutch in the thing was perfect. Um, here, uh, here, just a couple days ago, we uh, we took it to the track, and um, you know, I I I told them to you know check all the ABS stuff, and I, there were some ABS sensors missing, and they replaced all those. Um, and sure enough, that took care of the issue. Uh, you know, it, it, there's just so many inputs that these transmissions have, and they have to collect in within a split second. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. And if it doesn't have something, then the best thing that it does is just lets go and just doesn't do anything. And, uh, yeah, it, it, that's, that's the biggest fight that we're having right now. Um, I think, uh, I, I think we've got the, the holding power down pat. Now it's just getting to the electronics part. Um, and that's where, uh, you know, I was saying my, uh, uh my stage four is coming out. I'm trying to work it all out. There's just so many bugs, um, to where it's, it's basically a, a standalone unit, um, that the transmission will do what you tell it to do, when to do it, and how to do it. Um, so all the other inputs is out. The only thing that it monitors is uh, uh, speed um, or RPM. But then again, you know, if you have an ABS system issue, how is it going to monitor speed? Um, it's 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 a double-edged sword. But uh, you know, where the we're swapping a 4R into you know a 60, you got a standalone PCS system that. Uh, reads uh, throttle position um, and uh, RPM, well, it, it shifts, you know, if you hit, you know, 4,000 RPM, it knows to shift to second. You know, if it hits 3,800 RPM, it knows to shift to third and so on and so forth um, with a manual lockup switch, obviously. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, they both have their, uh, they both have their perks. Um, it's just a matter of just figuring it out. And again, the, nobody, the 5R has been overlooked for so long. Uh, I know there's guys out there that, you know, will disagree, which, you know, it, it is what it is. But a lot of people have, you know, turned their back on the 5R and said, you know, let's just go to the 4R, or go to a 47RE or 48RE, um, something that's been proven. Well, I don't really like stuff that's been proven. You know, I, I like to adventure into other things. Um, you know, hell, it's, that's why I build six liters. You know, it's, Nobody really likes them, and the biggest thing I like is to see their face when uh, <laughs> when I'm at the end of the track and they're not. <laughs> <laughs> it's been really cool to watch over the last few years is, you know, for a long time it was just like, the, I think in general, not the enthusiasts, but in general, people gave up on the motor. And sure. being a Dodge guy, you know, for like from the outside looking in, is I always was jealous of the 5R110 because it's like this transmission that can hold power, in stock form to a certain extent. Oh, yeah. But it's like the motors weren't there. Well, now all of a sudden, the 6-liter motors are putting out tons of power. Like, they're, mm -hmm. it, it's no joke. And it's really right. cool to see it happen. Yeah, it, it's just one of those things where, you know, people, uh, you know, including myself, you know, guys like Jesse Warren, um, Charlie, uh, you know, th there's, there's just all kinds of guys that you can, you know, look at and say thank you for, you know, for for taking that step forward. You know, I, I don't feel like I'm one of those guys. I feel like, you know, uh, I'm just here trying to do my part and uh, 
push you know push a motor and push a trans that uh, that a lot of people has just given up on or that'll mock. Uh, you know, I got I got some friends over at uh, over at Firepunk there. Uh, when it comes to the Dodge trans, I don't I don't really mess with them. I, I send them all over to Firepunk. They uh, obviously they they've proven something with those. Um, I was just over at a, a dirt drag for their uh, Labor Day uh, that I sponsored for them, and um, you know Levon had made a little speech of you know for for Red Diamond there, and you know he even said that uh, you know it's he's amazed on how far the six liters have uh, have come in the last you know two or three years. Um, you know Charlie running the nines here, which uh, congrats, buddy. Uh, it's, you better you better not uh, get too comfortable in that seat. I'm coming at you, um, but. Uh, you know, you got guys like that you know, that, that you you respect. You know, Levon. You know, looking at me and saying, you know, congrats on stuff that you know that I've done that you know other six O guys have done. Uh, you know, that that stuff means a lot. You know, that's that's Levon Miller. You know what I mean? Like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it's really it's really cool. And, and through this podcast, we've been able to meet tons of different people, and it's just uh, it, it's humbling. You know, and just to, to tell these stories and, and to give more information on products to to the guys out there that have these trucks and, and gals too. There's, there's women who race and, and modify their trucks and everything, and it's just it's cool to hear everything that goes into it. And right. And we were talking with Randy Reyes a couple weeks ago, and we were talking about his truck. And he's like, it's just crazy what the motors have done. It's now eclipsed almost what the 48RE can do, and now it's got to play catch up. <laughs> to these 2,500 horsepower motors, and it just mm-hmm. happened so fast on a bunch of different platforms. Sure, sure. Yeah, it, it, that's that's the thing is uh, you know the leaps of bounds and the the industry in general, not just Ford guys or you know the 60 guys. I mean, you got to look at the the industry in general. I mean, hell, look look at how much horsepower was at Ultimate Callout Challenge last year. Mm-hmm. You know, you get uh, um, you know, Ryan Milliken from Hardaway, you know, or Hardaway. It, it, the guys like that, guys like Levon, you know, doing these 2,000. Sean Baca, you know, uh, doing these 2,000 horsepower pulls. It's it's just ridiculous, um, and uh, it's just amazing, um, just how far you can push these motors, uh, and then still live to tell a tale. Um, it is. It's, it's it's really amazing just to sit back and look at the whole industry as one um you know people always ask me you know which which motor is the best well i mean you you're gonna you'd be an idiot if you don't say you know obviously cummins has got got it going on uh point blank they're, they're a great motor um they always really have been uh you know as far as reliability but you know it's everybody has their own taste for something you get dimitri over there uh you know going for the big numbers uh you know on the duramax side and Everybody's pushing, but when you get all those guys at one table, they're all friends. You know, yeah. there's the you know people think that you know we're going head to head. Well, we are. It's a competition, but at the end of the day, everybody everybody's just really cool. I had posted up on on Facebook uh, we were going to have you on and had people you know say hey, if you got any questions for me to ask David, let me know and I'll ask him. And there, so there's a couple I wanted to throw at you. Sure. <laughs> so, and this is it's a competition or a comparison between the 4R100 and the 47 or the 48RE. Like, in, you know, the Dodge side, like it, it's a newer trend where it's you know throw a 4R100 behind it um, versus not having you know the bands on the 47 or the 48. But in your right. opinion, from a competition standpoint, which one is better or gives you more reliability in that competition realm? Well, I mean, again, you know, it, I'm an honest guy, and to be completely honest with you, I don't really know a whole lot about the uh, the 47s or 48s. You know, I know they're, they if you know built right, they can do really, really well. Um, same thing goes with the 4R. Uh, the 4R is a you know it's a, a a synchronized shift. You know, there's always a clutch being applied. Um, whereas you know the 47 and 48s, you know, I'm not sure. Um, I, I I haven't dipped into that uh, that portion yet um you know if uh obviously if uh you know levon or um ats or somebody like that was you know on the phone with me they could you know they could help me out and do something like that you know which i wouldn't have an issue with asking questions it's the only way you're going to get by in this world mm-hmm. uh but uh you know as, as far as the i'm going to have to go with the 4r because i don't know anything about the 47 um 
but it, I like the four R's because, again, like I said, it's all asynchronized shift. Uh, first gear, you got uh, you know forward clutch applied. Um, second gear, you've got uh, um, intermediate that applies, and then uh, third gear is direct, and then fourth gear is overdrive. It's just apply, apply, apply. Um, whereas uh, you know the five R, you got you know you've got a clutch that has to release to apply, and then it's five R is tricky, man. Um, the four R is definitely a more sim- a simple transmission. Um, but uh, yeah, as far as the comparison between the two, it's I can't really answer the question because <laughs> it's a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just <clears throat> I don't know enough about the 47s and 48s to say you know this or that. You know, I, I just I just have to go with the 4R because that's that's the only one I know. What about the 6R 140s? Have you gotten to play around with those or sort of turn them apart? Uh, I have, uh, and uh, you know the biggest the biggest issue that uh, you know again you know I've got uh, kind of my mentor uh, Andy Warren and uh, uh, Matthew Harrison over there at uh, Warren Diesel. You know we talk quite a bit and we share you know odds and ends, and uh, you know he uh, he's helped me through quite a bit. Um, but uh, the biggest thing with the uh, the six R's is their their overdrive apply. Um, there it's just way 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 sloppy. Uh, which is your second gear, um, and uh, obviously your sixth gear. Uh, they're just super sloppy. Um, we're uh, uh, trying to develop a little something. Uh, there's, I've got one or two out right now that uh, that's doing really fine. They're okay. Uh, they're obviously, there's stuff that you know needs to be worked on, that needs to be fixed, or you know so on and so forth. But uh, as far as releasing them, I mean, I. I I don't really think that uh, it's going to be any time, you know, in the near future. I mean, hell, I've got about 22 transmissions all, uh, uh, well, i got 25 R's and about two or three, four R's that uh, need to be built. Um, and uh, I just don't have time. <laughs> a lot of it, too, is like a warranty period on them. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of guys don't really modify the trucks until the factory warranties are out or whatever it might be. And then, then it's game on. You know, so there's always a little bit of this delay, I think, with any newer transmission before right. you can really, you know, you have 20 guys calling asking for them, you know. <laughs> right. Well, um, you know, as far as, you know, the warranty and, you know, stuff like that and going kind of going back to a, a stock build, um, don't hold me to it, but I believe it was uh, uh, Marilyn who had a, a stock uh, 6R that was, I think it was damn near 900 to 1,000 horsepower, if I'm not mistaken, um, and was still holding. Uh, it was still doing just fine. Um, you know, I know, it, you know, this stuff, again, going back to the industry, the stuff that's coming out factory now is, is more powerful than anything that's come out and more stronger than anything that's come out. Um, but uh, the six, uh, the six R and the six seven, you know, that's, that's a game changer. Um, those, those, uh, that trans, that motor, uh, together, it's it's a game changer. I will say that it's you're going to see a lot more big power out of these uh, out of these uh, true four blocks um, in the very very near future. Uh, you know, I know I know uh, Craig over there at uh, Maryland. You know, I've been kind of following him. I don't know him personally, but uh, you know, I've been following him probably along with you know thousands of others. Um, He's finally got his uh, uh, his six seven uh, worked out pretty well. I think he just did uh, well over uh, twelve or thirteen hundred horsepower. Um, you know, I know he was having some issues there at UCC with fueling and whatnot, but it's like they're a game changer. They really are. It's really cool to see. See, I mean, that truck just in stock form drives really awesome. And right. Then, I mean, it's just. And all the the parts that are are coming out for them, you know, for the motors, the the fueling side, turbo kits, the transmissions, and it's yeah, you're right. It, it definitely hasn't peaked yet. No, no, not even close. Um, yeah, the 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 six sevens will be. Uh, I mean, like I said again, this could be a controversial uh, statement, but uh, I think the uh, I think the six sevens will probably be the top dog in the next uh, next year or so. I mean, it's. That's just the the you know the way I see it. I'm a six o guy. You know I absolutely love them through and through. Um, you know it's 
but I I think the six sevens will be the ones that people are like, damn it, now what do we got to do to beat them? <laughs> uh, so uh, you know, it's I think I think old uh, I think old fire punk in there, their their whitey there is gonna have some uh, <laughs> some big shoes to fill when when everybody gets this six seven worked out. Me personally, I don't want anything to do with the, the six seven. Um, you know, being being at the Ford Tech uh, or Ford shop there, and being a Ford Tech when they very first come out, I mean. They had so many issues with the 11s. Um, hell, I probably did maybe 15 or 20 motors there the first year they come out. Um, I mean, obviously a dealership's only where all the bad ones collect, but uh, yeah, they, they, those put a big, big bad taste in my mouth. Um, I'll sit back and watch the other guys figure it out. I'll, I'll just I'll sit back in my good old 6.0 and. You know, keep tinkering with it and keep pushing it. You know, there's plenty of six O's out there that need need to need some help and want some more power. And when uh, when you know your niche, you just kind of stick in it. Definitely. Now, if you're if you're gonna look back and and you know say when you decided to to start this company and and build these transmissions, was there something that that motivated you? You know, like in the beginning, it's hard. You know, it's hard to kind of to get out there to put everything together that you have to do as a business owner. Sure, and sure, absolutely. I always like to ask that question because they're I always get great answers. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it uh, there there was a couple things that really really pushed me. Um, you know, being at the dealer, I was at the dealer for eight years. You know, it just become repetitious. You know, a six o come in with a misfire, or six o come in runs rough cold or no start. It was. Hell, nine times out of ten, you could diagnose it without even plugging the damn computer up, um, and you would fix it right then and there. You know, I'm not saying that's how I do things now by any means, but uh, it, it just becomes so repetitious. And uh, you know, then uh, I was doing a bunch of side work, um, and uh, Jaron Holder and I got together because I was buying a bunch of parts from him, and uh, you know, he and I talked and. Uh, he was going through a transition with uh, with Holder Down, moving it from West Virginia to uh, to Kentucky, and uh, you know, just one day I just got fed up and said, you know, screw it, I'm leaving. Um, the pay, you, I mean, the first, I would say, hell, the first maybe two or three years that I was at uh, the dealership, I mean, I was doing really well for myself, flat rate. But then after the the six fours and the the six sevens and all that come around, I, it was just killing me. So uh, we got together, and you know, I told uh, I told my boss, which uh, we, he and I usually didn't quite get along the best. He was he was always negative Nancy. Um, but uh, I remember I remember one thing that he uh, that he said to me the the very last day. Um, pool box was all packed up, and you know, I basically went up, you know, as respect to shake his hand and say thank you. Um, and uh, we talked for a minute or two, and the last thing he says was, uh, "I don't think you'll make it if you uh, if you open up your own thing." He said, "There's, I just don't see it. You don't have that mentality." He said, "You're a follower, not a leader." Um, and uh, you know that that uh, that sunk in pretty deep. Um, from there, it uh, got chills in my spine. Uh, one, it scared the shit out of me, to be honest with you, and uh, you know. Because it's somebody that is supposed to be a, a leader for you, you know. Yeah. Um, scared the hell out of me, but what was done was done. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not the kind of person that's gonna go back and beg for my job back by any means, especially uh, especially after something like that was said. But that sunk in. That that uh, that played a toll, and it still to this day, um, it haunts me. Uh, you know, am I gonna fail? Will I fail? I don't know. I mean. Hopefully not, obviously, because you know, I got a family to support, and that's that's one of the big things why you know, I uh, uh, I left uh, Holder Down, you know, because uh, Holder Down was there in uh, Cleves, Ohio, and I live up in uh, Newcastle, Indiana, it's about two hours uh, one way. So, uh, you know, that drive was uh, I was taking that drive for about two years, and uh, once we found out that uh, uh, I was having a a boy, I just figured, you know, I had to get closer. Uh, I can't. I can't be two hours away and something happen and maybe too late or you know all that all that crap was running through my mind. I won't get into it, but uh, so at that point, you know, I, Lindsay, my uh, uh, my wife, she uh, she basically looked at me and said, uh, 
You've always wanted your own thing. Why don't you just go for it and do it? You know, why not? You know, I'll be here to support you. Uh, and uh, I, I looked at her and I said, you do realize that we have a son that's due to be born in like one month, right? Uh, and you want me to open up a shop all at the same time. She goes, just do it. Quit quit bitching about it and just do it. So same the same month, uh, I was, uh, hell, I left the uh, uh, November come around of uh, this past year. I got my uh, LLC and it, everything just kind of exploded from there. You know, the son was born. He's uh, he just turned nine months. Uh, my company's nine months old. Um, and here I'm sitting, you know, at a at a shop. You know, it's a 3,800 square foot shop with 22 some odd builds on the board and about seven other trucks in a in a lot that needs to be built. Uh, there's a warranty one or two. Everybody's got them. Uh, but uh yeah but that that statement there you know the 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 failing and you know the all that that that's a good fear now that I've turned it into and it's uh, it's kind of faded a little bit now that you know my son's here and I've got uh, every every wrench I turn every time I pick up that micrometer uh every every 15 kick starts I drink a day all comes down to him uh just uh, proving myself to him. I don't have to prove anything to anybody else but him. That's an awesome. That's an awesome story. I mean, I got I got chills just listening to it. I got pumped up. You know, so that's what it's all about. <laughs> that's, I think it's tested what you do. You know. Yeah. Well, like there's you know there's 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 people in your life that uh, um, you keep around for a reason, uh, and there there's people in your life that uh, you put in your rearview mirror for a reason. Um, you know, I, I'll be honest, you know, uh, Jaren and I, we had our differences, um, but, uh, you know, we, we, we still keep things civil. Um, I, uh, I'm, I'm still trying to get him to let me paint that damn transmission red. You, you hear me, dickhead. You better let me paint that thing red and, you know, go through it for you. Um, cause, uh, we need some more. I don't care if it's me or some Joe Schmo, the neighbor. I don't care who it is. I just want to get the, the most, nine second passes on a 5R110 as I possibly can and I want them to be my burgundy case um, and that's just what I want that's what I need uh, so you know Jaren's one of the fastest guys in the market uh, old uh, old Charlie I'm working on him I'll I'll, I'll get him sooner or later uh, but uh, yeah, it's, we won't go into that <laughs> What made you pick Burgundy? Um, to be honest with you, I, I don't know. Um, but it, uh, you know, the truck's that color. Everybody kind of, you know, when uh, everybody kind of associates me with my truck, you know, the one that uh, was in Diesel Power this year, it's uh, it's that same kind of Burgundy. Um, it's not my favorite color, to be honest with you. Uh, it, uh, it just it's something that you know people associate me with that. And yeah, it's. Uh, that's where it's at. Every time, every time I post something about it, uh, somebody's got something to say about uh, a, a meme of Ron Burgundy or something. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I, I laugh about it. So <laughs> always, I was like, because uh, you're right. Like you associate a color of a case with a brand, and just how that happens is so cool. And there's so many different colors out there, but it's, right. a lot of them, it's just I. That's what I, I like how it looked, or you know, something else happened. It's just it's a Cool little side story for for the products, but for like any of the guys out there that want to order one, like they're ready right now. They listen to this and they go, "I want one of these transmissions." What's the best way to get in touch with you and get one ordered? Uh, I mean, honestly, probably by phone, because uh, uh, you know I I don't have time to get you know, a, a, a website set up. Um, we uh, my uh, uh, Lindsay's sister is uh, she's a webmaster. She can develop that stuff, and I just uh, you know she needs she has questions that need to be answered and I just haven't really got around to it. Um, I would say probably 90% of my business comes from Facebook. Uh, like I said, I get, you know, somewhere between 40 to 50 private messages a day and, uh, you know, I get tagged. I don't even know how many times a day, to be honest with you. Uh, I, you know, I, I try to get back with everybody I possibly can. You know, those guys I haven't responded to, I apologize. Uh, but, uh, um, I would say ba- mainly by phone. Um, 
uh, Lindsay's been coming in in the mornings uh, and, and helping me out with phone calls. Um, so uh, if you could, uh, you can call the the 513-824-1680. That's, uh, that's my personal cell and my shop line. Uh, you know, I have it with me at all times. Um, just try not to call at like midnight, 1 o'clock, preferably. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, if, if, if I got a customer that has an issue, call me. It's, you know, I'll, I'll do everything I possibly can. You invite to wake up and make a pot of coffee to help you out. It doesn't matter. I'll try to do what I can. Um, but yeah, I, I would say at this point the phone is going to be going to be my best bet uh, to get a hold of me and you know just have you know information available. What you plan on doing with the truck, uh, the exact year of the truck, um, and uh, you know uh, uh, give me a price range. You know what. Uh, because not everybody's got seven thousand dollars to spend. You know what I mean? That's that's just yeah. legit. You know, hell, on my personal account, I don't have seven thousand dollars to spend. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, it just have have some information available for me. Um, and you know, uh, she uh, Lindsay doesn't know a ton about this industry. You know, she's just now coming in and helping me out. Um, you know, just be patient with her, help her out, uh, and. Uh, I'll get back to you as, as, as quickly as I possibly can. We appreciate you being on today and, and educating us and to tell and telling your story, you know, getting just, you know, giving a, a more of a personal side and a history to these, you know, these transmissions people are buying so they know who they're buying from, what goes into this product, what you're doing with R&D and quality control and then taking care of people. And uh, it, it was awesome. I mean, it was we, we we appreciate you being on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, um, I don't know why, but uh, one thing just popped out in my mind. Uh, I was uh, um, the the team and I were uh, heading over to uh, uh, Colorado there for DPC. You know, the, the truck literally had eight dyno pools on it, um, maybe a half a mile down the road and back, uh, just enough for it to shift through all the gears and all that. And uh, we were <clears throat> Justin. Uh, Gillard and uh, uh, Mike Loesch and uh, little Lance Lewis uh, was. We were all sitting in the car, and I get a or sitting in the truck heading down 70, and I get a text from one of my customers, um, and he actually said, uh, "You know, hey, we, uh, uh, I'm rooting for you. You're a legend." <laughs> you know, I kind of stepped back and was like, "Dude, I'm no nowhere near anything like that. I'm just a guy. I'm just you know somebody that." you know, tired of some of the some of the stuff that's out there and wanting to make you know, make the product better than what it is and keep pushing for it. Uh and, you know, at the end of the day just trying to keep a business and feed my family. Um, you know, my my front office here, the the top shelf of my uh I got a little shelf here full of transmission parts and display stuff and hell the top part of it's got full of, you know, family pictures. Um the uh and I, I honestly I got that from uh from Phil Taylor, to be honest with you. Uh you know, he uh he treats his uh company like a family, um uh, even his customers and uh I really look up to that. Um you gotta have something to work for, but I'm no legend. Uh, I'm just like I said, I'm just a guy. Um so but yeah, it's uh something like that really hit home and you know that that made me think that, you know, what I do, you know, people are watching. Um and I just gotta gotta make a name for myself, and that's at the end of the day, that's that's really all you got is is the name that you carry and what it means to people. 